morning. We want to. It's kind of crazy to think about. There's only four months left in 2019, but what a blessing it is to start a new month off by coming together and worshiping with the people of God. Thank you for being here. Certainly appreciate your faithfulness and attendance this morning. I know it's a holiday weekend. I'm sure we have some who are traveling. If you have your Bible, open it up, please, to Luke chapter 17. We're going to begin our study there in just a moment in verse number 11. Luke chapter 17 in verse number 11. In this study, or in this section of Luke chapter 17, we come across a man, uh, a very interesting man, a man who endured quite a bit. Now, we don't know who he, his name and, and details and things like that, but we are able to learn some very powerful lessons from this man. We just got done talking about the, the faithful love of Christ, of the faithful love of God, and certainly our God and our Savior Jesus Christ, indeed they are love. And we have reason to celebrate. We have reason to be thankful as the people of God. The story that we're going to look at in Luke chapter 17 is going to remind us about this idea of being thankful and recognizing what our Savior has done for us. We don't know a lot of details about the man that we're going to look at, but we know one thing. We know that he gave thanks to God. I'm talking about the, the man who is described as the leper. We read about ten men who had this terrible skin condition, terrible physical condition, and we find this man along with nine others who are going to have an encounter with Jesus. Let's pick up the story and let's look at Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse number 11. The Bible says, while he was on the way to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him. And certainly they would stand at a distance. When you look back in Leviticus chapter 13, you see all of the instructions that were to be given and how these individuals who had this skin condition, leprosy, how they were to be within society. They would have to be set apart. They would be by themselves. And so as they see Jesus walking in verse 13, they raised their voices Again, that would be something that they would do on a regular basis because Luke, or Leviticus chapter 13 helps us to see that those who had leprosy, that's what they were doing quite a bit. They were raising their voices, shouting, unclean, unclean. But now they're raising their voices as they see Jesus. They raise their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That's interesting because it helps us to see they knew some things about Jesus, right? They're crying out to him. They, they evidently were aware of who he was or the power that he had, and now they're crying out to him to have mercy upon them. And I think that would just be the natural response if you had that condition as well. Now watch this. When he saw them, he said to them, so think about what they must have been feeling at that time. Jesus responds. He hears them crying out to them crying out to him, Master, have mercy on us. Now Jesus responds, and what he says here is awesome. He said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they were going, they were cleansed. A couple of thoughts I want you to think about here. First, he says, Go and show yourselves to the priest. I want to know what these men were thinking when they heard these words from Jesus. Because he said, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And again, look back in Leviticus chapter 13. I'm mentioning this. I want you just to see this here real quickly. In Leviticus chapter 13, I want you to notice just a couple of verses here. In Leviticus 13, look at verse number 1 here real quickly. And then we're going to look at verse 45 and verse number 46. Leviticus 13, verse 1, the Bible says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling or a scab or a bright spot, and it becomes an infection of leprosy on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of his sons, the priest. That's why Jesus told them to go show yourselves to the priest. Now look at verse 45 and verse number 46. And verse 45 of the same chapter and verse number 46. As for the leper who has the infection, his clothes shall be torn. So that gives you some more detail about what these men would have been experiencing. And the hair of his head shall be uncovered, and he shall cover his mustache and cry, Unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean all the days during which he has the infection. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. So you know why they're crying out to Jesus now, right? Their life is over. And they're crying out to him, and then he tells them, go show yourselves to the priest. Were they now looking at their skin, thinking, what do you mean, show yourselves to the priest? 
What's interesting, when you look back in Luke chapter 17, he told them to go show yourselves to the priests. Then it says in verse 14, and as they were going, they were cleansed. So think about that. He told them to do something, and they had enough trust in Jesus to do it. And along the way, they began certainly to have seen a change that took place in their skin. How awesome would that have been to see this miracle taking place as they were going to the priest? Their bodies, which no doubt probably had a terrible, horrendous smell, all of the things that they had experienced, it was all gone now. And so Jesus, he answered them, and he helped them to see, or he, he, he changed their entire lives. He cleansed them. He healed them of this terrible physical condition. I can only imagine that these individuals, these ten men, were, were crying with great joy. And I'm sure they were looking at one another at amazement, looking at his, your bo- his body and his body and saying, I can't believe what's happened here. You have to think about all the emotions that these individuals had. And I often think about, too, the, the amazement I'm sure that the priest had, too, when these men came to him or came to him to examine them. I'm sure he was thinking, how, how did this happen? And when did this happen? And who did this to you? It's an amazing miracle that we read about. But that's not all because when you look at verse number 15, something really interesting happens here with this man that I mentioned earlier. And verse 15, now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, Turn back, glorifying God with a loud voice. So they were instructed to go to the priest. Now this one, this one man who had been healed, he turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his feet, fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him, and he was a Samaritan. So we see that one out of the ten went back to Jesus and began glorifying God and giving thanks to him. What's interesting is that Luke mentions that he was a Samaritan, and that certainly is not by accident that that information is given here. If you can think about passages like John chapter 4, we know that the Samaritans were often looked down upon by the Jews, and so I think there seems to be some emphasis here, particularly those who would have been aware of this story or who would hear this story of the shock of this despised Samaritan now returning with a grateful heart. But then there's something else that may be a little bit surprising. In verse 17, Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? Let me ask you, do you think that's a little bit surprising that Jesus even asked that question? I think it is. He's asking, wait a second. I see one of you, but were there not ten of you that that were cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? So Jesus is surprised. Where are the other nine? I just changed their entire lives. They had no hope prior to this. Their problem was an end-of-life kind of problem, no hope kind of problem, separated from everyone else kind of problem, never having any interaction with their family kind of problem. And yet only one came back to give thanks. Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. This is one of the most powerful stories we read about. And certainly the miracles of Jesus are all powerful. But I just think this story really stands out. When you see that this man, I think you could describe him as truly being the exception. He was the exception. While 10 of these men were healed, and I'm sure all 10 were thankful and were rejoicing, and yet there is something that stands out with this man that Jesus seems to emphasize that indeed he was the exception. We are to give thanks as the people of God. We are to have a heart of thanksgiving. And this story, I believe, will help us to understand that this is the mindset that we should always have, a heart of thanksgiving. Now, I say that, uh, that we should have a heart of thanksgiving, and we all know this. We know that we should be thankful, but I will say at times, individuals who are thankful, I'm looking at myself in the mirror too, can sometimes be the exception. It sometimes is very difficult because we live in a day and age where a lot of people today, they're not thankful. A lot of people today are often ungrateful. In fact, that's what Paul talked about in the last days in 2 Timothy 3 and verses 1 and 2, that in the last days there are going to be a lot of people who are ungrateful, and certainly we see that. 
But what about us? We are to be different. Well, our study is going to come from Luke chapter 17. I want to just quickly look at Ephesians chapter 5. And I want to remind you of what Paul said here. We're familiar with verse number 19. Let's make sure that we're also familiar with verse number 20. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 19, or verse number 20 rather, after Paul got done talking about speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, listen to what he said next. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God even the Father. That is the mindset that we are to have. We are to always give thanks. It is more than just a holiday, which is only a couple of months away, by the way. This is a mindset that we are to have every single day. We are to always give thanks. Now, imagine if you were one of those lepers for a moment. Imagine that you were outside the camp. Imagine you couldn't have any interaction with your family members anymore. Imagine you having to shout out time and time again, unclean, unclean. Imagine having no hope in your life. Then Jesus changes your life forever, gives you a second chance. What would your response be? Which camp would you fall into? The nine? Or would you be a part of the exception, the one who went back and gave thanks to Christ, who gave thanks to God? We can imagine that scenario. But we don't have to imagine something even far worse. We understand that there is a far worse condition than leprosy, and that is sin, the problem of sin. Leprosy caused people to be separated from others. Sin caused us to be separated from God. One with leprosy, their life was over. One lost in their sins has no eternal life. Leprosy brought about pain and embarrassment, yet sin brings pain and suffering, not just now, but also in eternity. Leprosy was a terrible skin condition, yet sin is a terrible heart condition. And only one could heal these men of their leprosy, that was Jesus. And only one can heal us of our problem of sin, and that is Jesus Christ. And my friends, we have been delivered from our sins. If you are in Christ, you are saved. He has purged you from your sins. You have been redeemed by his precious blood. We've been cleansed by his blood. And we have a great high priest who has purged us and delivered us from this terrible heart condition. And yet the question we all need to ask ourselves, how are we going to respond? What is going to be our mentality? Are we going to be the exception? Or are we going to fall into the other camp where the nine didn't even go back and praise Christ and God for what he had done? I want to just give you a couple of thoughts. I'm up against the clock, so I just want to give you a couple of thoughts this morning, two thoughts from Luke chapter 17, as we think about having this mindset of always giving thanks, of being the exception, of being able to live a life of gratitude. And the first thought I want you to think about, there's two phrases really that are found in Luke 17 that stood out to me that I think will help us to have this mindset, that will help us to navigate in our lives to make sure that indeed we have a heart of thanksgiving. And the first one is where it says that when he saw that he had been healed, he turned back. And I really like that language there, this idea of turning back. Now, we don't have all the details about how long this man's journey was. Remember, he was to go to the priest to be examined. And yet, while he saw or when he saw that he had been healed, the Bible says that he, that he turned back. And I think this is something that stands out, obviously, from the story that makes this man really unique. He turned back to go back to Christ and to thank him and to praise him and to worship him. This man knew the source of his healing, and so do we. And what I think this helps us to see is that we need to make sure that we turn back and give thanks to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you thinking about the future yet? you thinking about 2020? I'm thinking about 2020 a little bit. Are you thinking about maybe five years from now, ten years from now? It's good to think about the future. We only have so much control, but it is good to kind of plan four or five years out. And to think about what's coming down the line. Some of you are in college. Maybe you're already thinking about, I can't wait to graduate. And maybe you just started. you got a little bit of time before you get to that point. While it's good for us to think about the future, I'm becoming more convinced that we need to stop moving forward and really take a step back. We don't need to move forward so fast to the point that we don't really take a step back and turn back and appreciate all that our Savior has done for us. 
In our society, it's all about what is next. Football is back on. Surprise, surprise, Illinois actually won a game. That will end in about a couple of weeks when they start playing better teams, but they did win a game. But you know what's interesting in football? The coaches, after they win a game or lose a game, they typically have the, 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 the tagline, they'll say, on to the next one. It's just kind of like they forgot about everything that just happened two hours ago or a few minutes ago, and their mindset is, I'm not even thinking about the past. I'm just moving forward. Our team is just moving forward. I know we have to do that, but what I think is really important is to spend some time in reflection, to spend some time returning and going back and really going to God and, and going to Christ and really appreciating what it is that they have truly done for you and for me. Go back, turn back, and reflect upon what Christ has done for you with respect to your soul salvation, with respect to your family, or your health, or even your career. Be the exception and turn back to him and give him that praise and honor that he really deserves. There are so many things for us to worry about in 2020 and 2021 and in the future, but now is our time to stop worrying about the future and to really start considering even more the magnitude of the blessings that Christ has given to you and to me. We need to turn back and slow down and think about all the things that God has already blessed us with. We always need to be thankful. This is how we can be part of the exception, but that's not all. I want you to notice, you go back to Luke 17, the text says, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. I love that language there. What's interesting is that these men, initially, when they saw Jesus, in verse number 13, they raised their voices. Yeah, they wanted to be sure that Jesus heard them, that he was going to hopefully help them out. But what else is interesting is that when you look back in verse number 15, one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, he turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. So while he had that loud voice initially, please save me, have mercy on me, that didn't stop. He continued to have this loud voice of giving thanks to God. And I'm sure that would have been normal for them just to kind of be loud in nature because of the things that they would have to continually say around others but no mistake about it this man had pure joy pure joy of knowing that his body was made new knowing that he could go home that he could see his family if he had a family that he could be around others that he could resume a normal life and yet the others for some reason failed to go back and express the magnitude of the joy that they had no doubt this man was humble he was grateful and this man had received much mercy. And it wasn't based upon his power that he had been healed, and it certainly wasn't anything that he necessarily deserved. This man, however, he was not concerned about who might have heard him or seen him praising God. He was overcome with emotion, and he demonstrated his thanks and appreciation to Christ. Brothers and sisters, that's how we can be the exception. We can be the exception, having this heart, of always giving thanks and truly appreciating, turning back and letting God know how thankful we really are for what he has done. I can't help but think about the story in Numbers chapter 13 and chapter 14. Remember the story there? God gave great promises to the tribes of Israel that he's going to give them that promised land, that they would be able to be successful taking the land. And when the 12 spies came back after 40 days, there should have been a spirit of rejoicing. A spirit of thanksgiving. But what kind of spirit was there? Except for two. There was nothing but complaining and murmuring. And what's interesting about that story is that they were loud as they complained and murmured about the situation that God had put them in. What a terrible example that is, or what a terrible mindset that was. Yet sometimes, if I'm being honest with myself, I can have the same mindset as well, where I can complain about so many things. I can find things to complain about, despite all the blessings that God has given to me. If we're going to be the exception, we need to glorify God, and we need to give thanks. We need to be loud about it. Everyone is loud in our world today. Have you, you realize that? Everyone seems to be loud. Everybody has a platform. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's the Graham. Everybody has a platform. 
politi- politicians are loud and they want everybody to hear them and, and people are loud about sports I'm not even going to say anything about a certain team but people are loud about sports and people are getting loud now about a recession oh boy I don't know what's going on we may be heading towards a recession people get loud when it comes to money what, what's interesting too is that I get loud sometimes especially when it comes to complaining I'm guilty I get loud and other people can get really loud too when it comes to complaining and even gossip at times and the sad thing is we want people to join in with us we want other people to be loud with us when it comes to these types of topics and yet what is interesting is that we can be loud in so many areas of our lives and yet when it comes time to saying a prayer of thanksgiving or singing songs to God together as a family a couple of times out of the week we can if not careful we can become really quiet and we can find it can become almost difficult for us to to have the energy and the emotion to really give thanks to God why is that we need to be the exception this man came back and he worshiped God he worshiped and he cried out with a loud voice and that's what we need to do we need to cry out and let God know how thankful we are as we sing to him we need to cry out and let God know how thankful we are as we pray to him we need to cry out and and be loud when it comes to our words and as we communicate with others that our words are seasoned with salt brothers and sisters we need to be loud about not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus let people know who our king is and let people know what he can do for them We need to be loud sharing the gospel with others and demonstrating our faith and conviction and being an encourager and helping others and not one who complains. We need to be thankful. And we need to show God how thankful we really are. In fact, this idea about being thankful is not really even an option because in Colossians chapter 3, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 15, I gotta wrap this up here. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 15, Paul says something really powerful. Colossians 3 and verse 15, Paul said, Let the word or let the peace of Christ do rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be what? Be thankful. That's who we are to be. That's who we are to be. We are to be thankful. We are to be the exception. We are to be the ones that others see giving thanks to God. Let us always be thankful. and Let us have this kind of heart. Let's show God how thankful we are through our worship. Let's show God how thankful we are through our walk. Let's overflow with gratitude like this man did because Jesus changed his life. Jesus has changed my life and your life. Let's be sure that we show him thanks in all that we do. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are thankful that we can even approach your throne of grace. We are thankful that you love us. We are thankful that you are patient. We are thankful that you are forgiving. And we're thankful for this family here. We're thankful for your love and your mercy and the blood of your son. Help us, Father, to be the exception. Help us, Father, to live a life of thanksgiving. Help us, Father, to truly turn back and to praise you and worship you and honor you. And never forget all that you have done for us. You have given us everything we need, everything. And for that, we are grateful and we are thankful. In Jesus' name, amen.